and every organization that's here. And thank y'all for allowing me to come up before the people. And that, uh, like the organizations do, they always give me assignment. And the rule move movement today gave me assignment to stand up here. So here I am. I want to say that, yes, I was in SNCC. And SNCC's job was to build organizations and go to every town. And the first thing you do when you get to the town is find you somewhere to sleep mm -hmm. and somebody to feed you those two things you had to get out. Right. And the other thing you did was form and support or create local organizations right. and help them build it, work with them, right. and make them the leader. Right. And you become a servant to the leaders and help develop the organization. Right. And everywhere SNCC traveled, if we went to Albany, Georgia, we organized different people there, and they became the Albany movement. And once they became the Albany movement, we put executive staff, and we uh, gave them the leadership and talked about what they wanted and what, they, what ideas they had and what ideas we have and how could we assist them. And then when we agreed, we went out and organized the youth movement. And the youth movement was the fire brand. They went out to demonstrate, to protest, to face the dogs, the cats, and whatever. And to educate the children, we sang freedom songs. Yeah. And to take the fear out of them, we sang songs like, ain't scared of nobody, cause I want my freedom, I want my freedom. Ain't scared of nobody, cause I want my freedom, I want my freedom now. And they bring the dogs out. We would say, ain't scared of your dog, cause they want my freedom. They bring the billy clubs out. Ain't scared of your billy club, cause they want my freedom. I want my freedom now. They put us in jail. Ain't scared of your jail, cause they want my freedom. And on and on. And the freedom songs serve the young people to educate them and motivate them. And we did that. So every time we went, we found local people and we went to serve them and we talked to them, told them about freedom, and the local people became the dynamic ones. They became the ones that led and guided SNCC. And that they saw us as heroes because we, you know, we went there and brought it out. We went there and stood on the steps of the courthouse yeah. and the sheriff who had killed and murdered and raped the people for a long time. We call him a sack of mothers and I won't say it here and, and crooks and savages and, and, and let the people know that the sheriff was a liquor runner, a drug runner, a pump or nothing. And we're going to fight them and we're going to whoop them. Gonna and we created that and we're going to win. <laughs> and we took that to the people and, and before we know it, we had organizations all over Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, yeah. with the local people leading it. Went on plantations and talked to people like Fannie Lou Hamer and told them that you're a slave. You ain't supposed to be work for these white folk and don't get nothing for it. We got to fight them. And she agreed with it. Yeah. And they, she said, okay, I'll go and try to register to vote. Yeah. <laughs> she went down and tried to register to vote. And in they end up, they beat her. She said, our body was hard when they beat her. Got to beating her. But they thought they were going to scale. But she came out of jail saying, go tell it on the mountain, over the hill and everywhere, that freedom is coming. So SNCC was able to go to all these different places. And whatever the people felt what they wanted to start to fight with or what they wanted to fight against, we joined in with them and encouraged them and SNCC became a voice for all the liberation movements throughout the South. Yeah. Everybody want to fight white people. Everybody want to fight against the system. Everybody want to tell how bad these white folks were. Everybody want to confirm. We encouraged them. Went out there and got with them, marched with them, marched on the side of them, took the beatings with them, yeah. even took death with them like Cain yeah. Swan and Goodman. Yeah. Took their bullets like Mega Heaven, like yeah and many other people, and we had no other choice. And we just continue to find people and fight. 
We fought them through voting and that kind of thing, but we used both. We didn't see there's no end. Yeah. We saw it as a means to go out and talk to the people, tell the people, and use that. But when we talked about voting, we talked about being a sharecropper. We talked about being a slave. We talked about in and taking the land back that you done worked all these years and all the other kinds of things. We talked in the cities. We talked about the maids working for these white people. We talked about these black people working for these white people, doing the work, but yet you don't make the same amount of money that white folks make. Yeah. We talked about not having dignity to be able to go into a bathroom, be able to sit down in the street. We told people not to be scratching where you went into, not to be bowing your head to the white man, and to stand up to him. Yeah. Yeah. And we had to deal with all those kinds of things, yeah. feel people had. Yeah. And we let people know that we had to be warriors. Yeah. And our job was to create warriors. Yeah. But in creating these warriors, they fought. And these people were nonviolent. Yeah. And we faced everything they had. They brought their dogs out. We faced the dog. They brought their bombs out. We they bombed the churches and killed our people. We faced that. Yeah. They beat us when we walked down the street. We kept saying, ain't going to let nobody turn us around and kept marching. And these people had courage. And as we fought and faced the bombs and jails and forced them to pass voters' rights bill and all that kind of stuff, we come to find out that the civil rights bill didn't have no silver in it. We didn't get a damn thing. They just told us you can come in the bathroom, come in here and sit next to the white man and smell his shit. I'm the first one to sit down next to the white man and smell his doo-doo. And all those kinds of things like that's progress. Then we fought them and and, and got more militant and demand the right to vote. Yeah. And they bombed us and killed us and did everything. Yeah. And now we see that because you get to vote, you still ain't got a damn thing. Yeah. They're the ones set the ballots up. Yeah. It ain't nothing on the ballot. Yeah. So when we saw that wasn't nothing on the ballot, we formed our own party now. Let's go back to the Mississippi Democratic Party, Black Panther Party. In Lyons County, we formed the Black Panther Party. And when we formed the Black Panther Party, we had to pick up guns because these white folks were so so much of a terrorist. And we met, we went to the cotton fields with guns in our hands. Yeah. And when they were out there and started shooting at us, we turn around and start shooting back. <laughs> Yeah. But as we went out there and fought them, the movement kept moving. Yeah. And then after they passed the Civil Rights Bill, James Meredith said, how are you going to pass a voters' rights bill in Mississippi and you done burnt down over 65 churches? You done burnt down schools? You done assassinated a whole lot of people, killed people? And then you're going to tell people not to have no fear? Yeah. People hanging from trees? Yeah. And now you say, go register and vote. You don't kill them for doing it? He said, I'm going to walk through Mississippi and tell people to have no fear. He took a few steps, and a white man stepped out the bushes and shot him. And when he shot him, we met and said, we're going to take the march up. And we met with the neo-colonialists in the movement, NAACP, yeah. Urban League, and yeah. the other yeah. Uncle Tom. Yeah. Yeah. And we said, we're going to take the march. We're going to Mississippi. Yeah. And we ain't taking no shit off the white folks. Yeah. And we they hit us. We hitting back. Yeah. And all the Uncle Toms, oh, hell no. Whitney Young, all of them, they ran away. <laughs> and stoked the comeback and yeah. snick. Took him down through Mississippi. Took yeah. Dr. King said he would go, yeah. and we took brought in the deacons for defense from Bogalusa, right. and we went down through Mississippi. And Dr. King got the education of his life. That's right. That's he right. saw the work of SNCC. Right. He saw the work of the Pelzers. Yeah. He saw the work of real freedom fighters, the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party. Yeah. It does that in the field, hustling, condemning the white man, condemning the farm owners, 
and saying we ready to fight. And he saw them people out there and they had whores in their hands. And we introduced them to black power. Yeah. And time black power came out the mouth, they began black power and got bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. Then Uncle Tom down there, even King, yeah. we don't want no black power. Yeah. We don't want no green power. We don't want no yellow power. We and, and uh and then he got ready to say black power. We all hit black power. And black power began to grow strong. And the question began, what is this black power? Yeah. And that debate began, but in Detroit, yeah. they went out in the streets one day. Yeah. And the rebellion started. Yeah. Some whatever broke it out, I don't know. The police. Police, of course. Yeah. But when it broke out, people started burning down the city. Yeah. Yeah. And the crowd was black power. Wow. And then they shot and killed many, many people. Round up 20, 30,000 people, black men, and put them all in prison, yeah. just like they're doing in Palestine today. Yeah. But the black power movement spread it everywhere, right. and the cities were burning down. And black militants began to come up, black power groups yeah. began to rise up. Yeah. O'Malley saw me on television one day, and I was saying black power, and behind me, the whole cities were burning down. And he called me, you got to come down here. <laughs> and uh, and we began, and we went there to O'Malley. When they put him in jail, we went to O'Malley, and uh, El 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 said, go help these fellows. Yeah. And uh, I looked at it, jumped in the car, drove 100 miles to get to him. Went down there and organized. Uh, had to uh, uh, fire his whole staff down there, because half of them in there cooking uh, 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 Drugs. Y'all got to get out of here with that. And we organized, brought in the movement, and we got O'Malley out of jail. And our job was to support him, give him all what he needed to do, encourage him to keep fighting, and serve under him. And I served under the Uhuru movement in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida. And today we got O'Malley and got this movement today. Yeah. Now, when the, uh, we created the Black Panther in Lyons County, O'Malley and the, and the uh, uh, Jomo movement and the Black Power movement and the SNCC movement in St. Pete, and they began to organize and grow. But at the same time, we linked up with other movements, Palestine. When they were killing the Palestinian people and fighting a war with Egypt, we said guns for the Palestinians and, and, and the scientists run for your life. And we spoke up for them, spoke out against Zionism. Then we looked down in Africa. We protested against what they were doing in Africa. We began to see Africa and began to see that we, first of all, we had to teach our people they were black and wasn't nothing wrong with being black. That was a major battle. Then we had to teach our people that were Africans. And when we saw that, what they were doing in South Africa, we went and we protested that movement went to the United Nations, me and SNCC, even John Lewis with him, went to the United Nations. We broke in the United Nations of uh, South African Embassy, uh, dope, went in there and kicked their ass and said, free the people in South Africa. And then we, we opened that door, we looked and saw South Africa, Angola, Mozambique, and they were using guerrilla warfare. And we supported that guerrilla warfare. We joined in. <coughs> to help Angola, help Mozambique, uh, liberate their country, never using guerrilla warfare. We identified with revolutionaries in Africa, from Senko Toure to Mau Mau in Kenya, Ghana running them out of Ghana, and we, uh, and Lumumba became a, a, a hero and a god to us after the United States and the CIA had went there, assassinated him, uh, burned his butt, uh, Put, cut him up in little pieces, put his body in ashes, and he was the prime minister of the Congo. And we uh, they were drafting our young people, putting them in Vietnam War, sending them to Vietnam. We made it clear after they killed one of our workers, Sammy Young Jr., went into a bathroom that said white only, and come out, they blew his brains out. 
And we said that if a young man, black man, can go into the army, fight for America, and come back and can't piss in the bathroom behind a white man, we opposed the war in Vietnam. And we caused everybody to go out and demonstrate against the war in Vietnam, march against it, fight against it. And at the same time, the city was already burning down, rebellions taking place all over, thousands of people being shot down in the streets every day all over this country, and we added to it, hell no, we won't go. We won't fight imperialism for Africa. And it was Ho Chi Minh that introduced us to uh, imperialism, explained to us what it was, and told us our fight was in Africa because Ho Chi Minh had been influenced by Marcus Garvey. Yeah. And he pointed us toward Africa. And then we told, well, we're going to help you fight anyway. And we were burning down these cities. And they had to bring troops back right. from Vietnam and land them in Detroit, right. land them in Newark, land them in Ohio, because we were fighting against imperialism. And we said, Ho Chi Minh, you got them over there, and we'll take care of them over here. And that Snick was able to speak for all the black nationalities. I thought it was a bomb. I started to Nick was able, Nick was able to speak for all the black nationalists, black power group in this country. And then we began to speak for the liberation movements in Africa. And we joined in with the African movement. We joined in with our brothers in the Caribbean. And all of us began to speak out against imperialism. All of us began to speak out against the United States. And we all saw that we have the same enemy. Yeah. The yeah. same enemy, whether you live in the Caribbean, whether you live on the continent of Africa, whether you live in the United States or anywhere else in the world, we have one enemy, imperialism, yeah. colonialism. And an uncle Tom is an uncle Tom, whether he a preacher, whether he a school teacher, whether he a just an old seller, or whether he a president in Africa somewhere, a neo-colonialist is a neo-colonialist, and a neo-colonialist is a puppet for the enemy, and they're more dangerous than the white man could ever be. And we must fight them until they are dead. Uh, fighting for the liberation of Africa, and we got to stop playing with America, stop playing with NATO, stop playing with the United Nations, and all this shit need to be burnt down. All this shit needs to be burnt down. And just the other day, our brothers in Haiti went down to the prison, burned them down, and marched out with over 5,000 prisoners. We got to burn the prisons down in the United States. That's the best prison program you could ever have. Burn them down. There ain't no negotiation. Motherfucker, you got my children. You got my babies in them jails. And jails ain't nothing but slave ships. And they must be burnt down. And we don't want no good white man, bad white man. We, we know what that shit is. Preacher been telling us all our life, if you don't do what I say do, the devil gonna get you. And now the Democrats tell us, if you don't listen to me, Donald Trump gonna get you. And everybody running around talking about Donald Trump gonna get us. Bring on Donald Trump. We want that part of the women. Well, we can inaugurate him with terrorists. We can in the world. That's what we have to do. Yes. We are fighting for Africa. Yes. We are fighting for the poor people. Yes. We are fighting for the past. We are fighting for the workers. Yes. And we are fighting against imperialism. Yes. And we must organize like never before. Right. The one thing about the Uhuru movement, they are organizers. They are organizers. And they are organized in every city and created leadership everywhere they go. They're an extension of SNCC and Marcus Garvey and Paul Robeson and the rest of them. We thank you, Amari, you're a voice. 
for our African people. And you don't pause for the people that fight for liberation all over the world. And we say to the FBI, CIA, you win at Garvey, you win at Paul Robinson, you win at Lumumba, you win at Nkuma, and you win at thousands of others, our leaders. But we say, hands off the room. <laughs> Get your rifles together. Get your bomber on together. Because if you touch the whole movement, we'll burn this brother down. All right.